So, good morning. Um, firstly, on behalf of Fleur and myself, thank you for coming along today. Um, inspiring creativity online paints a rosy picture for Windsor Newton. Just one check. Have you guys got the... <laughs> Um, so, first of all, I'd really like to give a very quick introduction to the companies we represent. So obviously, Windsor Newton for Fleur and Red Technology myself, just so you get a little understanding on it. This session really is very much focused on Windsor Newton and really having a look at the challenge facing one of, sort of the oldest fine art materials manufacturers in the world. And then, really, out of that, what was the, the strategy and objectives that came out of it to make sure that Windsor Newton really stays as the number one choice for, for artists? worldwide. Um, we'll go through and look at, at the solutions and innovations. So how do we actually deliver on those objectives? How do we actually deliver on the strategy? And then really kind of to wrap it up, this, this project's been a fairly big project. It's, it's um, fairly large, but it's been going literally live since June. So we've only had a, a short period of live, but what has been that impact? So going back from the strategy right at the beginning, and where everyone sat around trying to work out how we can meet the challenges and really what is the benefit that it's brought. And so that's what we're going to cover today. So I'm just going to let Fleur introduce uh, Windsor Newton. Hello, good morning everyone. Um, so yeah, I'm Fleur, head of e-commerce at Collart. Um, Windsor Newton is one of the seven brands that Collart own. And um, yeah, bear with me, I've literally got like a week left. So uh, after this I'm going to go home and put my feet back up. Um, but yeah, Windsor Newton was founded in 1832, and it's, it's the leading global fine art brand. Um, and we've got operations in 16 countries, and we've got a really strong global network of, of trade partners and, and distributors. And um, our products are sold in 120 countries around the world. So it's quite a niche industry, but it's very global, and it's, it's, um, yeah, it's a really fun industry to be working in. Um, and innovation is really at the heart of Collart and of Windsor Newton, so we're always trying to innovate and find new products um, to really meet the, um, the needs of our artists. Okay, just um, in case some of you guys who aren't artists don't know who Windsor Newton is, um, you'll probably know um, really their paints have been used um, to deliver some of the best known masterpieces in the art world. So the likes of Picasso, et cetera, use their, their products. So that kind of gives you a slight spin. For those of you who are in the art world, you'll know absolutely who, these, who Windsor Newton is. Um, so just a quick, quick one on red technology. Um, really, the, the partnership came about because we were brought in to try and effectively deliver um, the solution, try and help Windsor Newton meet the challenges. Um, who are we? We're a, an innovative um, e-commerce agency, so we deliver solutions for retailers, distributors, um, manufacturers. And really that's powered by our e-commerce engine, Tradeit. Um, and what we try to do through that platform is really bring competitive, um, competitive advantage to each of our clients. And it's really about bringing a combination of things together. So whether it's the promotion and advertising, so that's doing things where we're going to excite users and try and convert them. It's looking at things like the content management. So what is that extra content we could provide? So content-led commas provide a lot richer environment for the user, a lot richer experience, rather than necessarily just a quick checkout. And then kind of really looking at how we bring community. Now, community is something that we're very much going to focus on today. How do we provide the stickiness? How do we drive the users to the site? If we can get the users to do their activity on our site, we can absolutely impart that, that brand message, we can interact, we can learn. Um, and then obviously key to, to a lot of our clients now, more and more we're finding that our platform is becoming the central glue to a lot of retailers sort of, if you like, their ecosystems in terms of omnichannel. So technology is really changing the way that artists are learning their craft, the way they're shopping their products, but also the way they're interacting with each other. So obviously it's all uh, moving much more online. And um, as I already said, as a company, we're constantly looking to innovate and um, to better yeah, answer the needs of our artists. So through consumer insights, through a lot of research and development, we're always looking for new product um, innovations and we're always launching new state-of-the-art products. 
And with the relaunch of the Winge Newton website, that really was the next innovation for the brand. So really moving to the online space and displaying our brand in a much more modern way. And this really was the start as a company, for us as a company, um, really the start of that whole digital journey. So very exciting. Um, so the challenge, well, the fine art industry is, is really a traditional industry. And also we as a company up to about a few years ago, we're really operating in a very traditional way. So very much um, B2B focused, um, relying on the trade a lot um, to really, yeah, interact with the consumer. Um, and um, um, we were very much, we were very good at, you know, pushing our products into the trade, but maybe not enough doing um, the pull activities um, with the consumers. So um, the real challenge for the project was to, you know, launch a new website, start selling direct, start communi communicating direct with our consumers and building that relationship, but still keeping that trade um, network really on board and really still working closely with them. Um, and really, as a company, we're, we're really trying to think more multi-channel. So although we don't have our own stores, it's how do we still have that really strong B2B network, but also go direct to consumer. So over the years, we've obviously changed our strategy to really have the consumer at the heart, rather than maybe necessarily the, the trade. And it's really about activating all our consumer touch points on and offline. Um, and that underpinned with um, a strong communication strategy um, with lots of strong imagery and rich storytelling. Um, so obviously, as a major touch point is the website, and we've um, included lots of offline elements to that as well. Um, social media and bloggers, we've really upped our game in that social space, and again, where we can um, amplify that online and offline message. Um, our partners, so our trade network, really important. Working with them online, offline, helping them as well uh, become more modern online. Um, advertising, of course, online, offline, in-store point of sale, but also you know digital assets and translating that to offline assets. Sampling, we do a lot of sampling. Trying is believing is our, our, our belief. Um, and again, we have a huge sampling program that we activate on and offline. The TFAC stands for the Fine Art Collective, and that's really our grassroots artist program. So we've got a resident artist in every country that we operate in, and they again have a whole network of artists, and we go into universities and we lecture about the products and talk to our consumers. But with the new website and with sort of our new digital infrastructure, we're now communicating much more um, with them and having a proper email um, communication strategy with them as well. And events, we always do a lot of events. And again, on the website, there's quite um, a focus on the events as well. So again, bringing that online and offline and really pushing traffic from the website to the events. Um, so really to um, reiterate the, um, the, um, the fact that obviously offline is really important and will stay really important for us, um, there's lots of research about you know, consumers researching online and then purchasing offline. So there's just some stats. Um, but really for us, you know, it was the objective to create a brand, like an industry-leading brand website. So most and foremost, we are a brand and brand website. But from that, we believe, you know, the sales will come. Um, and, yeah, we, we really want consumers to, you know, browse and do whatever they want on our website and then go and purchase Windsor Newton. It doesn't really matter where from. You know, we've created a new sales channel so they can purchase from us. But if they go to a store, that's absolutely fine, or a different online shop, we don't mind. Obviously, our objective is to increase our market share. So yes, the objective of the project, um, really to build and deepen the relationship with our consumers. 
we had the challenge of where we're really dependent on the trade network. Now we really want to go direct to the consumer and under, understand them much better um, and also gain those consumer insights through the website. And then as I've mentioned, of course, we've created a new sales channel. Of course, we expect some sales um, from the website as well. So really, what was the solution put together to kind of meet sort of effectively the challenges and, and the objectives and the strategy? So really what we came up with is, is really to try and deliver a, a unique global solution. It's really key to make sure Windsor Newton is the market leader. Um, an absolute core to part of this project is to ensure that market leading presence is maintained, but also looking to grow it. So it's about delivering a kind of global online experience. And really, at the heart of it, what we wanted to do was put the artist, and through that, allow them a single destination for them to buy, to learn, to um, effectively exhibit their work. So we want it to be absolutely a platform so they can get notice for their work and interact. And then, obviously, a key part of this is to be able to interact and, and socialize with their peers. So essentially, there, there were three core components that, that made this up. So the very first one is, is effectively the content discover. Really, it's about creating a huge resource of information to, to help artists. And the core behind this really is, is by having this, this information, you are setting a competitive um, advantage because a lot of your, your competitor sites aren't carrying it. It also attracts other users to the site, which allows you to impart that Windsor Newton brand. The shop, um, as Fleur sort of mentioned, is, is key for a number of reasons. The very first one is to make sure that globally, Windsor and Newton can make sure that artists know their full product range. Not all of their products are stopped in entirety by every retailer. So one of the things is, is to make sure that those products are available and accessible. So as an artist, I, I know the full range. Also, when new products come out, it's an instant delivery. You're not reliant on working it through the, the retail network. The other side was obviously to open up a new sales channel. So if artists are on, online on the site, they can buy. But absolutely fundamental to Windsor Newton is their retail partner. So the key behind this was to also ensure that we could drive footfall into the stores. But when we drive that footfall, absolutely, we want to make sure that they're buying Windsor Newton and not anyone else. And then a key bit, the bit that sort of brings this all together is, is the community. So this, this really is, is to try and also add an additional stickiness to the site and provide that environment for, for effectively artists to communicate with each other. Now, each of those individual ones are designed to draw in and attract users, um, and also can work collectively. But the key, really, is what we're looking for is a constant revisit. If we can get the users engaged with the brand and with the website, and they're constantly finding reasons to come back, it gives Windsor Newton the beautiful opportunity to impart brand, to learn from their customers, um, but also to influence them and to ensure that, effectively, Windsor Newton will be the products they buy. So the key behind this is, and this is moving slightly outside of traditional kind of um, e-commerce delivery, is really to try and bring one solution together. So effectively one site, one ease of management, one really good user experience to try and get the separates and bring it into one. Um, and all of that is powered um, by the trade e-commerce platform. So it makes that management very easy for, for Windsor Newton. So if we look at, at each of these individually, so much like I said, Discover is absolutely about where artists can learn, can get inspired, um, and really to provide a, a central portal for that information, effectively their little library online. So obviously we've got the one-stop resource. Um, so as an artist, I can go, and when I go there, obviously that beautiful opportunity for Windsor Newton to interact with them. They can help aspiring artists, but as, as all artists will know, it's a learning game, so you can learn new things, new tips, techniques. And this is part inspired by Winds and Newton, but also part inspired by the community. So really trying to get that, that involvement two-way. Um, we wanted to bring it to life, so absolutely make the interactive a lot, lot stronger. So this is by really reusing videos and using modern media. Most devices can carry this information. And then obviously within this, a lot of this art is very inspiring. And quite often you don't get with the art as the story behind it. What inspired the artist to create it? How did they get there? What were the techniques they used? So this really brings in articles and things like that for artists to, to view. Um, we also provide tools. Now these tools are there to help users to find. So an example could be a medium finder to make sure they're using the correct mediums. 
Um, and then obviously fairly, fairly key to Winsor Newton is that, that color palette. So to be able to access different colors, to be able to access and, and see this information very easy. So we then have the e-commerce shop. And this obviously, as we mentioned, is very key to, to being able to, to publish their products, to be able to, to drive sales online. But also, as well as the shop and other parts of the site, it's also about learning to get that touch point to the users. What are they buying? What are they buying with? What are they mixing with? So to start to get the learning that traditionally was a little bit one step removed because they're reliant on the, on the partner channel to bring that forward. So, one of the first things is to make sure there's a class-leading e-commerce website. This really has to have all the functionality users expect. It has to have a very good user interface and a user experience because we want to make this something that they're going to enjoy and keep coming back to. The product presentation, this is the art world. Can't get away with, um, with poor product presentation. So it's a very graphical presentation of products. But if you actually have a look at the top left-hand corner, you see the blend of colors like a rainbow. That is actually a filter. So it allows the user to filter the products visually as well as the more traditional by price, et cetera. So again, finding ways to interact with the, the artists themselves and how they see things rather than say a more traditional by price, by type, you know, by color thing. Um, Obviously, cross-sell is, is very important. So how do we get the artists to use a complete range? But also, for key, as Fleur said, they really do believe in if you try their products, you really will use them. So it's about making sure we impart and get the opportunity to get these products out there. Because once they've used, um, the statistics prove that these things do come back and repeat sales. And what we touched on earlier, absolutely, this is about making sure Windsor Newton grows its market share. And what Fleur said um, earlier is absolutely correct. It's about ensuring the sale of a, of a fine art material as Windsor Newton and not anyone else. So very much behind the heart of this is to try and drive footfall into the retail partner to make sure the retail partners are on board, um, as well as the, the own online sales. And so store locations is a great way for users to very quickly be able to access products if they want them to go through bricks and mortar. And then a key thing is obviously um, Windsor Newton are a global brand. They've got, they're in 16 countries and they've got a network of partners. But obviously they, not all of those partners and, and their countries can reach everywhere. So one of the key things about a site is it opens up completely new channels that are untouched currently. And these can then be delivered through world, you know, worldwide deliveries, etc. So again, trying to increase that market share and reach. Um, and then this is um, key to kind of taking things forward. Obviously, with a site like this, artists are all unique in their different ways and everything else. And so part of this is to try and understand the artist. So we can actually start to push content that's more relevant back to them. If we understand that they're a watercolor, then we should really be pushing maybe potentially watercolors or other in, um, content of interest. This we know, the more you personalize, the more you give the right information, the right product to the user, the more likely they are to engage in, and convert. So part of what exists underneath the platform is the ability to then move into this personalized world. So if we talk about the community, so this, this is starting to move really um, outside of most sort of traditional e-commerce sites that you see out there. So this, this one world coming together. For Windsor Newton, it's really, really important, the socialized aspect of it, because it allows them to actually kind of interact with the artists. The other side to this is obviously it allows artists to, to share um, and reach out to each other. It's absolutely phenomenal in terms of, of driving that, that repeat activity on the site because if people are on there doing all of their socializing, they're on Windsor Newton's site and not someone else's. So inbuilt within the site is its own online community. It is absolutely one world. Um, users can create their own profiles um, and so upload information. Now, this is a two-tack. It's not just about who I want to kind of um, connect with. It's also about showcasing because the idea behind this site is to actually showcase artists' work to helpfully give them a platform to be able to, to reach out to the galleries and the wider audience and the public. So biographies are very important. Obviously, there, as we talked about, the ability to upload their art, there are full-blown galleries within the site. Um, and this allows them to share work, um, but also create their own gallery, as well as being tagged out into things. So if you ever go onto Windsor Newton's site, you'll absolutely see some of this art within different galleries, all tagged against the different types. Um, now, this is a, the kind of, as we're loosely moving into a Facebook app built within the site. Artists can now start to personalize this world. This is a big site. It has huge resource. Um, it has a lot of information in it. So how do I, as me, make this more personal, more pertinent to me? So this is the start of that journey. It's saying, well, actually, which 
Artists, who do I like out there that's doing great art? I want to follow them. Who's following me? How can we interact and share that kind of information? Um, I can also go around the site and every bit of content, articles, videos, um, images, products, other people's art, I can tag as likes, and that builds up my mini website. This is what I'm interested from Windsor Newton. It also provides formidable information back into Windsor Newton, gives them that information that they were lacking before by being one removed. Um, and obviously the key is, is that interaction. So we want them interacting because if they're all chit-chatty on the site, um, the ultimate thing is they're on Windsor Newton. And really the, the key is also to provide this events bit. And this events has a two-way thing, as well as obviously exciting and providing opportunity to, to artists. It's also about bringing the, the retail partner back in. This is about driving footfall into their galleries, into their stores or events. So various things are done to try and bring on events in each of the territories they operate in. So obviously there's some fairly key ones. Additionally to that, we looked to try and bring some other innovations to try and ensure that you know, when the site went live, it absolutely cemented Windsor Newton as the market leader um, to kind of keep, keep the competition at bay. So some of the innovations that, that have come through. So one of the first things, if you go onto their site, it is all tiled. And if you just move to the right, it will keep scrolling and more and more tiles will come through. Now, each of those tiles can then serve content from each of the three sections. So starting to, to bring that content according to, to different users, rather than it's the more traditional style of, of just one big image. Um, that information can start to be personalized according to the media type. So a lot of artists, not all, but a lot of artists will tend to operate in oil or watercolor or things like that. So again, if information can know, we can get into, get into that sort of form of personalization. And then the key thing is that user profile. We've now started gone from having some information through the various kind of separated touch points to a lot of information. How do we make use of that? How do we then turn that around um, to merchandise back to the users to drive that, that content, to drive that re-engagement? And within the system, it's now starting to store this data for it. Now, one of the key things for every site, um, obviously, for digital e-commerce, I want to search for products and up they come. Well, obviously, the challenges within this site is actually its content is huge. And one of the things we wanted to do is allow the artists to zone in on the areas they're really interested in. So here what we're seeing is a traditional product search. Um, but if you notice along the top, there's a whole set of tabs. So these tabs could be searching around artwork. It could be around videos. It could be around things like members. So I want to search for other artists to bring that information through. Or it could be tips and techniques. Now one of the things you're seeing is that filtering is still existing down the left-hand side. So I can come along to the videos and start to filter it according to my criteria to get to that content rather than having to scroll through. It's obviously key for the site to be able to deliver that. And then this is, this is really the, going to be the heart of the project. Now, it's not gone live yet because we're just waiting for that, that core build-up of data. But right at the heart of this site is an activity feed. Now, this is then taking my own personal website to another level. This is controlled by the user. They determine what their likes are, who they follow, what they're, the people they're following it up to. And this will start to inform that user of what's going on within their bit of interest. Very, very powerful for keeping the user on the site and bringing them back again. And it allows that personalization of world to kind of exist within such a big site rather than necessarily they get lost in it. And this will then have a formidable time, formidable impact because what it will do is drive that continuous return of the users to the site. And that obviously allows Windsor Newton to kind of part, part with that interaction, that learning, um, and that influence. So, yeah, as we said um, earlier, we were quite heavily dependent on our, on our trade network. Um, and now we actually can, you know, see our own consumer insights. We can analyze what they're doing on the site, what they're browsing for, looking at, searching for. Um, and this will really now again step up our innovation and our product innovation. Um, and you know, that's how we intend to grow the market even further with obviously new product developments. And obviously a big objective was to get that closer relationship with the consumer. Well, everything that they can do in the site and comment and interact with, with, with the whole site, that will really give us that um, insight, but also that relationship, because we can interact with the consumer as well. Obviously, the additional sales channel is a, is a great benefit, and um, 
There's enough on the site that we can link to retailers, so with the event, the store locator, um, and we're looking at many more ways to, to, keep, to involve them. So that has actually strengthened that relationship, and the, re the retailers really appreciate it because we're taking them on that journey and taking them on board. Um, and this, this whole new, basically, digital infrastructure that we've built is the blueprint for ColorArt going forward. So for all the other brands, we can now bring onto the same platform on to trade it and um, yeah, use that. So we've we've since launched. We've obviously seen some tremendous results. Um, some of them here, um, and um, um, basically the message is that we've really reinvented ourselves on how we display ourselves online and you know, that world that we've opened up for, for the artists. And um, we've created a new sales channel. We see every month our sales increasing. Um, you can see that the store locator is, is really being used a lot. So there's that interaction that we can then again feed back to the trade. Um, so yeah, all in all, really, really good results for us. And it's obviously we're not stopping here. We've only launched our English channels, so um, we're still looking to roll out to all our language channels. Um, so that's it's quite a mass. It's a massive site, so it's a massive project. So we'll be rolling that out steadily. Um, and then, most importantly, we get a lot of great feedback from the artists. So obviously, that for us is key. Um, and they love the connect section. They love interacting with us as a brand. Um, so yeah, for us, it's been a really, really positive and successful project. <laughs>